Okay, so now we're going to install Prisma to our application. So we can run this command here from the documentation npm install prisma dash dash save dev, which will install Prisma as a dev dependency. Okay, and we can then in initiate it with npx prisma init, but I want to make sure it's done with SQLite because by default it'll be done with Postgres. So don't just type in npx prisma init and press enter. Type in npx prisma init dash dash data data source dash provider. So like so. SQL light. Perfect. So it's going to create a couple things for us. It's going to create a .env file with a database URL to file of dev.db. So this will create a local SQL light database for us. And we can go ahead and remove these comments. Okay. If you're gonna push push this to GitHub, just double check that your .env is in your gitignore. If you download the starter project, this should be okay already. And it created a folder called Prisma. And in the Prisma folder, we have a folder called schema.prisma. Again, I'm gonna remove these comments at the top here. And you can, for now, ignore this generator part. This is for more advanced configuration we will not cover in this tutorial. But here, we can talk about the data source, DB. So provider SQLite. So if you remove that and then look at the type inference, you can see we have all these options, CockroachDB, MongoDB, MySQL, Postgres, SQLite, and SQL Server. We're gonna stick with SQLite. And then the URL will be our environment database URL. Okay, and you might not have the syntax highlighting like the way I do. So it's very important when you're working with Prisma is to use the, let's find it real quick. It is the Prisma VS Code extension, if you're using VS Code, and it's by Prisma.io and has over 2 million uh, downloads. So this is the one. So it gives you this nice syntax highlighting for Prisma. Cool, so now we're gonna build our first model and a model is basically a table in your database, right? So in traditional SQL, you have tables like this, create table public.user ID name email. But in Prisma, we create models which have a similar structure but there are more like javascript that we know or json object to be more clear so let's create it model user so this name here will be the name of the table in your database um, if you don't like a capital u you can write a lowercase u but this is the way that prisma likes to do it so we'll stick with that way and there are ways to rename your tables, but we will not cover that in this tutorial. So every table needs a primary key, which is usually an ID. And the ID will be a type of int in this case. And we need to have the at ID annotation and the at default annotation where we can see autocomplete will give us auto increment. Okay. Let's add some more fields. We're gonna add an email field, which will be a type string. All these will be auto-completed, as you can see here. I can't just type in like, um, stretch, right? This doesn't make any sense. It's gonna, it's gonna give me a red underline. So string. And we're gonna use the at unique annotation. So with the at unique annotation, um, a user cannot create cannot be created if the email is already created for a different user. And finally, we'll add a name field with string with a question mark. And the question mark represents optional field. So a user doesn't have to have a name. And by default, it'll be null. So ID and email are required. 
and name is not. But ID is also kind of not required because it has a default. I hope that made sense. So we created this model in our schema.prisma, but our database does not know about it yet. So the way we can now push these changes to our database is with the following command, npx prisma db push. So let's push the changes from our schema to our database. There we go. Your database is now in sync with Prisma schema. And also, we now have a dev.db here. And we can't see it right now. I mean, there, there's some extensions to look at a SQLite database, but we will we'll get back. We'll see our database later with Prisma Studio. And last thing I want to share is that when you run NPX Prisma DB push, if you don't have a database in SQLite, it'll create it for you. But also, it'll also generate a Prisma client. And what that means is it'll install for you at Prisma client. And this is what we will use to actually talk with our app. If it doesn't install, just go ahead and type in npm install at prisma slash client. I'll install it again just for the heck of it, right? And we're good with our package JSON and we're good with our database now. And just for good measure, when you run npx prisma db push, it'll automatically run the generate. Um, the generate is how our cl our client in our app knows about our fields and our tables. But if you feel like your database is ever out of sync with your actual application, you can just run npx prisma generate and it will generate the client again. So now let's start using the CRUD operations in the next video.